I'm sure you know how to use a dictionary. You've got a word in mind and you want to know the details of it. So you look up in the dictionary to find those details. The dictionary maps from the word to its definition. We call the word that you look up a key and we call the definition a value. So dictionaries are collections of data that are presented in key value pairs. And this type of data structure is really useful and really common. So for example, you might have barcodes that map to product prices. You might have an English word which maps to a French word. You might have a user ID which maps to their user attributes or a team name as a key which maps to a list of the user IDs of the people on that team and that list would be the value. And in Python there's a data type which does exactly that and funnily enough it's called a dictionary. And it looks like this. Dictionaries are represented using curly brackets. Each key is mapped to a value by a colon. And each key value pair is separated by a comma. Dictionary can have as many key value pairs as you want. And this dictionary contains three key value pairs. So whenever I say dictionary from now on, I'm not referring to the book. I'm referring to that. And if I print the type of this dictionary, you might have guessed, Python says it's dict. So you can get the value of a particular key in a dictionary by indexing the dictionary. And you know by now that when I say indexing, I mean using square brackets like this. So I index the dictionary with the key name, it returns me the value. Of course, I can assign that to a variable, something like that. And then I could use that later down the line. Like lists, dictionaries are ordered and mutable. They became ordered since Python 3.6, and that means that they keep the order in which you add keys to them. And the mutability of a dictionary means that you can add, remove, and change the values of the different keys. So to add a new key, you simply index the dictionary with that key name. And then set that equal to whatever you want it to equal. Run that. And then if we look at the dictionary, you can see it now contains that key and that value. The keys in a dictionary are unique. So the way to change a value of a key is to overwrite it like this. And now you can see that I've overwritten the value of that key. The rule is that keys can be whatever you want as long as that is not a mutable data type. They're most commonly strings. On the other hand, values can take on any data type and they can even have the same value for different keys in a dictionary, which you probably have guessed. So what that means is I could have a dictionary of numbers or a dictionary of numbers and strings, or I could even have a dictionary of lists or a dictionary of dictionaries. In fact, I could have a dictionary of dictionary of dictionaries of lists of dictionaries. It can be as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. Dictionaries are very flexible and easy to work with. So if you don't know what type of data to make a particular variable that you're working with, go with a dictionary and it'll probably be easy to change later. Just a note on nested dictionaries. If you index a top level dictionary and get a dictionary like this, then because this thing is a dictionary, you can then index that. So there I've done this double indexing, where the first index gets me this dictionary, and then I index that with the name key to get that value inside of that dictionary. And you can do that as deep as you need to. If you try and index a dictionary with a key that doesn't exist, you're going to get a key error, like this. So we've seen how to add and change items in a dictionary, but what if we want to remove them? Well, again, I'm not going to teach you everything, but I want to teach you to teach yourself, which is the key skill. So if I didn't know that, I would just look it up like this. I'm going to search the name of the language, which I'm using, whatever thing I'm doing, in this case, I'm using a dictionary, and what I want to do with it, which is remove an item. First link from Stack Overflow, always a good resource. Click into there, scan the question. Yep, looks about right. Scroll right down to the first top answer. It says the del statement removes an element. So I can do del, then index my dictionary with a key, like that. 
And down here, it also looks like I can pop off the key as well, like I could pop off an item of a list. So let's have a go at that. So if I wanted to remove a key using the Dell keyword, then I could do something like this. And then if I print the dictionary, you can see now it doesn't contain that key, which I've removed. And another way that I could do that, as we saw, was using the pop method. So if I do my dict pop, and then the name of a key, and then print it again, you'll see that now it doesn't contain that key either. So there's two ways you can remove an item from dictionary. And I just looked them up, I didn't need to know that. Really quickly, there are three useful functions of a dictionary which you just have to know. So I'm gonna show you them now. The first one is dot values. And this returns you something much like a list. It's called dict values type, but it's much like a list. And it contains these things. So these are the different values of all of the keys. A related one you might have guessed is the keys themselves. So if I want to know all the keys in a dictionary, I can just do dot keys. And here again, you get this list like thing with the names of the different keys in the dictionary. And the final one I'll show you is a combination of those two things, which is dot items. If I run that, then it returns me a list of the key value pairs. So here's the key name. And here's the value. And this can be really useful if, for example, you want to iterate through different key value pairs. And I won't give an example now, but I'm sure you'll find one. So just useful to know about the keys method, the values method, and the items method of dictionaries. And with that, you are ready to get started using them in your projects.